this is a routine in times like this. The Taliban ambassador to Pakistan has condemned what he called the terrorist attack, saying this is a terrorist act we strongly condemn as the Taliban have given shelter to the Saudi mil militant Osama bin Laden, of course, and he, he's been accused by the United States in the past of masterminding these kinds of attacks. So they're at least on the record uh, from a rhetorical point of view of saying we had nothing to do with this. Let's go to Martin Fletcher, NBC's Martin Fletcher, Tom, who is in Israel uh, right now. Martin, tell me uh, the reaction uh, by the Israelis to this course turn of events here in the United States. Well, of course, everybody has been very, very quick to uh, to express complete solidarity with the with the United States. The Israelis, of course, are very experienced in these kind of things. They've offered to send all their emergency help they can to the United States. Uh, they've also, by the way, just closed the Israeli airspace just in case uh, things do spread. But the among the Palestinians, uh, a different reaction. Yasser Arafat immediately expressed complete horror, condemned the attacks completely. But on the same time, in some places on the streets. In the Palestinian towns, there's been a, a rather strong expressions of support, of, of delight even. There are 3,000 Palestinians took to the streets, we're told, in the West Bank city of Nablus, and smaller demonstrations also in East Jerusalem, Tulkam, uh, Bethlehem, other Palestinian towns, in support of the bombers, uh, happy of the, these few Palestinians and what has happened. But of course, that's just... We don't know how widespread that is, but there have been some clear support, uh, demonstrations of yeah. support for the bombings. But Martin, we should point but out... I must stress, the Palestinian leader... I should stress that Palestinian leaders all condemn totally the bombings. We should put into some perspective for us, if you could, Martin, how uh, displeased many Palestinians are with the United States right now about their feelings that somehow the U.S. is siding more with, Israeli and, and what's going, with the Israelis in terms of what's going on in the Middle East. Well, there's <clears throat> complete support across the board of uh, belief among Palestinians that the United States and Israel are one, that, that the United States is together with Israel uh, in, in, the, um, in, in the situation here in, in, the, uh, in Israel and the West Bank. They believe the United States completely supports Israel and therefore uh, deserves to be to some kind of um, attacks against the United States. So there have been many calls here, uh, especially in recent weeks, by the way, in, in some of the Palestinian media, for attacks against the United States. So there is a, a great feeling of anger, a great belief that America supports Israel, and a great belief also that Israel, without American support, could not be uh, as aggressive in its retaliation against Palestinian suicide attacks as it is. So but Martin, that, a, that's a really... A feeling, strong feeling. I was just going to say, Martin, that, that sentiment... Sorry, Katie, go that, ahead. I was just going to say that sentiment is really nothing new. Has it been exacerbated in recent weeks uh, in terms of how the Bush administration has been dealing with the Mideast? I think it has been exacerbated because throughout the, throughout the last 11 months of the, of, the, of the fighting, there was always a feeling among Palestinian leaders that the worse the fighting got, the more likely it would be that the United States administration would intervene, uh, would try to, imp to help impose a, solu a solution on the Palestinians and the Israelis. The Palestinians have always wanted an international force to get involved, believing that would, that's the only way to really get to a solution, an imposed solution. And what they're seeing from Washington uh, is, if, if anything, President Bush backtracking from that, it, it's le making it rather clear in several statements from American leaders that Israel and the, and the Palestinians should get on with it and that until there's a real possibility of peace talks, America won't get involved. That's the belief of Palestinians. But of course, I just want to stress that this Palestinian anger, we don't know that has anything to do, of course, with what happened today. All right. Thank you, Martin Fletcher, in Israel this morning. This we have afternoon. Some, I was going to say we have a couple of other developments that we ought to share with everyone. Uh, as uh, it ripple effect seems like an understatement. Uh, the U.S. borders with Mexico and Canada now have been closed. White House sources are saying all principals in the White House, uh, senior Bush advisors and officials like the vice president and the president himself are either in the situation room or in bomb shelters. They will not say exactly where the president is except to say that he is safe. Um, there, there have been comparisons to Pearl Harbor this morning. 2,400 people were killed in Pearl Harbor on that attack on December 7, 1941. It is likely that the death toll today will be higher. The political magnitude of this is yet to be fully calibrated as well. But as we have been saying throughout the day, this is a new form of warfare against the United States. And as Ambassador Bremer said, in that case, we had the return address. Right. It's, it's still certainly unclear and may remain unclear who was responsible for these 
absolutely horrendous attacks. Christian Martin is a producer for Dateline NBC and he joins us now. And good afternoon once again everyone. I'm Jim Rosenfield along with Jane Hansen. We are sort of working in tandem with NBC News. We want to bring... Go north. Get out of southern Manhattan for two reasons. The dangerous smoke condition and secondly, we need all of the open space we can get to evacuate people from the World Trade Center. What we've heard is, I think, what you've heard, which is that there are two different planes hit the two towers of the World Trade Center. There was an attack of some kind on the Pentagon, which was confirmed to me by the White House. The, the Defense Department, and I don't know, I don't, I don't believe so. The Pentagon is what I was told. The uh, military has sealed or, or is trying to seal the airspace around New York City. I assume they're doing the same thing with Washington. We know because we've seen several jets up there, American jets up there. We have our helicopters up in the air also. So we hope right now that things are stable, but the evacuation effort from lower Manhattan is going to be horrendous. And uh, it's uh, probably the most horrifying thing I've ever seen in the whole of watching people jump from that building. That was Mayor Giuliani within the past hour, mm -hmm. and his advice right at the top of that sound was go north. Exactly, which is the best thing to do. We've had a number of inquiries into our offices about where people can get information, emergency information, uh, information about people who might have been in those two buildings, um, information about transit, etc. You can go to our website. We have dozens of phone numbers that are at WNBC.com. And please go there because that way you can get the accurate information and the numbers which will... Uh, give you all that you need to know for the moment, at least what there is to know, because again, uh, there continues to be a lot of information that we are seeking and we do not have answers to. And, and in fact, we have heard of, uh, of a few casualties, but we do not yet know the extent of um, the, the human casualties in, in today's uh, tragic incidents. And the scope of this, what appears to be very well-coordinated terrorist attack, is unfathomable. And Ralph Pence is in our newsroom right now to share with us uh, what you have learned in the way of the terrorism angle on this story, Ralph. Yes, folks, you've been hearing some speculation this morning, but now an FBI source that has been very reliable in the past for me tells me that the Bureau is now convinced that this has all the marks of the multi-millionaire terrorist Osama bin Laden. Only someone with his widespread terrorist operations, I'm told and I'm quoting, could have pulled off such an elaborate attack. And shortly after I talked with the FBI source, other experts began pointing to bin Laden. Now, you should know that just a few weeks ago, he was saying that he would spring an unprecedented attack on the United States. And as we're talking, unless things have changed, he has been under the protection of the government, so-called, in Afghanistan. And Afghanistan has been warned by the United States in the past that if bin Laden pulled anything of this magnitude, uh, they would face a great deal of difficulty from the United States and perhaps military action. And so we're going to have to see now what takes place. And as you look at these horrific scenes, you can only wonder what the uh, U.S. military and the FBI is now planning. But I can tell you, the FBI is now convinced that Osama bin Laden is at the heart of this. Back to you. As I look at this list, there were two American Airlines air airplanes that were involved. There were two United flights. Um, it, it's possible that the second United flight was the original crash into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. That's the, the speculation that I'm, that I'm hearing now. So it appears to have hijacked these airplanes is what we're looking at at the moment, according to uh, some, of, some of your FBI sources. Right. Uh, there, would be, there would be a track record of some sort, at least names, at least somebody had to be on board that airplane to hijack it. So that will give them some kind of leads, will it not? Well. You know they're working already, and uh, my uh, instinct on this is that the, the force of the statement indicates they've already got some indication of where they're going. Incidentally, we're getting some uh, other late developments locally here. You may, you may have already reported them, I'm not sure, but just to be sure, the uh, northern and western borders of this state, of New York State, have now been completely closed. Uh, the U.S., of course, is now closing the borders uh, with Mexico and with Canada. Just, uh, just came across the desk. I thought I'd pass that on to you. Thank you, Ralph. We appreciate right, that. Jane. Uh, we should also tell you that Con Ed has reported some outages that apparently in Lower Manhattan, West Street, and to the and Hudson River, south of Chamber Street. Apparently, there's also some gas and steam service that has been interrupted. So, um, again, at 
all of our urgings are simply avoid going towards downtown Manhattan at all costs today. And, and I'm sitting here holding uh, faxes that have been coming into the newsroom. We'll just pass them on to you with information about closings. The Metropolitan Museum of Art closed to the public this morning. The Yankee game has been canceled in light of this morning's event. In fact, Major League Baseball has pwned its entire schedule for right. today across the country. All branches, all 85 branches and four research libraries of the New York Public Library closed today. Uh, you mentioned the Con Ed power problems. New Jersey, this is important, New York Waterway Ferry Service operating to New Jersey. It is carrying passengers from Manhattan over to the New Jersey side. Ferries are departing Pier 11 at the foot of Wall Street to points in Jersey City, Hoboken, and Weehawken. They're telling us that additional boats are departing from the New York Waterway Ferry Terminal at West 38th Street to Weehawken. So that is indeed a way for people to get out of Manhattan. It might be one of your only ways at the moment. Right. I do have some bridge and tunnel information as well. The Lincoln Tunnel still shut down. The Holland Tunnel still shut down. Uh, we had heard from Governor Pataki earlier on the network. He was saying that portions of the GW Bridge uh, were reopened to outbound traffic as well as LIRR trains and Metro North trains heading outbound, heading out of the city, although the Verrazano and Brooklyn uh, Bridge uh, city bound closed. The Gothels and Bayonne and Outer Bridge closed in both directions. The Man I'm just reading right off the list here. The Manhattan bound 59th and Queens Midtown Tunnel closed Manhattan bound. The Williamsburg Bridge, Manhattan Bridge, Brooklyn Bridge and Battery Tunnel closed in both directions. Course, Obviously a transportation nightmare. Uh, and, and also, of course, all the airports are shut down. And we should also add that a lot of foreign carriers are not allowing their aircraft to come to the United States. Um, uh, flights from France, for example, have been canceled for the duration of the day. So if you were expecting somebody to come home today, um, you can pretty much count on, on them not being able to get here. And there have been some, some phone difficulties. Um, that's because of the sheer number of people who are trying to use telephones in the New York City area right now. But again, if you're trying to get some specific numbers uh, for information, go to our website, and that's where you'll find some listings as we get these numbers into us. There's the website address, WNBC.com. Linda Baccaro is joining us now. She has been out in Midtown Manhattan and has been talking to an awful lot of people. And uh, three firefighters and a pregnant woman at St. Vincent's, 150 people injured, 60, 70 injured at Beth Israel. And again, high-ranking police officials uh, requesting anonymity believe that the casualties will reach into the thousands. And Mayor Giuliani was just imploring anyone who has any sort of hospital experience, if you can go, go somewhere to volunteer. They desperately need your services. And they need blood. And they need blood desperately. So also if you're a volunteer firefighter somewhere else, please come help out. you are desperately needed. I want to go to Cindy Shu in the newsroom if I can. Cindy. Okay, Todd, I just wanted to uh, update. We're now getting more information on those planes that went down. So people can find out the exact numbers. We're talking about United Flight 93, which left Newark at 8.01 this morning, headed for San Francisco, had 38 passengers aboard, two pilots and five flight attendants. The airline said that that flight has crashed near Pittsburgh. Um, the second plane was United 175. It left Boston at 7.58 this morning. It was headed to Los Angeles. That aircraft had 56 passengers, two pilots and seven flight attendants. No word on where that plane went down, but United has confirmed that it was flight 175 that did crash. American Airlines, we've been telling you, was the first plane that went into the World Trade Center. That was flight 11 from Boston to L.A., 81 passengers, nine flight attendants, two pilots. And then flight 77, also American Airlines, from Washington, Dulles to Los Angeles, 58 passengers, four flight attendants, and two pilots. Together, American Airlines confirmed they have 156 people dead on those two flights. Um, to find out more information, if you had relatives aboard and you need inform information, we have the response number, and that is 1-800-245-0999. Again, for the American Airlines flights, that's Flight 11 and Flight 77, that response number is 1-800-245-0999. I also have an update now on uh, New Jersey Transit. It has halted all rail service on its northeast corridor, North Jersey coastline, and Raritan Valley coastline. A spokesman says the service was suspended at the request of authority. So again, New Jersey Transit halted all rail service on its northeast corridor, North Jersey coastline, and Raritan Valley coastline.
And we're also hearing that all Major League Baseball games have been postponed. All Major League Baseball games have been postponed. Todd and Angela, back to you. Cindy, thank you. Also, we want to point out the Kennedy Space Center has been shut down. Dulles Airport, I believe, has been evacuated because of suspicious packages there. Also, a report that President Bush will not return to Washington. No surprise there. He was uh, out of Washington earlier today and did speak to the nation. I am sure he is in transit. He is safe, mm -hmm. but he will not return to Washington. Vice President Dick Cheney in charge uh, at the White House. Michael Olooney is here on the set with us. We're getting a report that the military has now deployed troops, including a regiment of infantry, to Washington, D.C. Hotels in Washington, D.C. are being evacuated because of reports of suspicious packages. And all United flights worldwide have been suspended. Families of United passengers can call a number. We're going to give you that number now. It's 800-932-8555. Again, if you have family members that are flying on United, their worldwide flights have been suspended, and you can call 800-932-8555. And so far, two people. So far, two groups are claiming credit for this attack. Osama bin Laden being one, and the Democratic Front for Liberation of Palestine. But I know, Todd, you mentioned this earlier. It, it's only just begun in the who's going to take credit for this department. Uh, obviously, at this point, uh, the United States is still on full attack alert mode. That means, as uh, Marsha Kramer pointed out just a few moments ago, reporting that two warships mm -hmm. have been deployed to New York Harbor. Uh, we've got all air traffic in this country is shut down. Airports are shut down. The borders with the U U.S. borders with the, the uh, C Canada and Mexico are also now shut down. We have Governor Pataki live on the phone with us, sir. We appreciate you joining us now. Um, obviously, this is just an incredible shock. Your thoughts? Well, obviously, America is under attack. New York is under attack. And uh, we're doing everything we can to respond to those whose lives are at risk, who continue to need our help. And we're doing everything we can to have the maximum security effort possible to, to prevent any further incidents as we go forward. But uh, this is a, an attack of a magnitude that I don't think anyone would have predicted. And we're trying to respond in as strong and effective a way as possible. Governor, we want to get your perspective on, on what has happened and what may happen next. But I want to talk, first of all, about the National Guard. I know you've called them out. Uh, what will they be doing in uh, the next few hours? Well, we've activated the National Guard from across the state. Uh, uh, we're, we're going to be moving units into New York City and co coordinating with the city. I was just on with the mayor, and as uh, the city police and, and fire uh, teams need additional support, we will use the National Guard to provide it. Uh, we've also been offered assistance from uh, National Guard units and emergency services from the surrounding states, and they've been placed on standby. And to the extent that we can, uh, we need these services, we will provide them to uh, go do everything we can to help those whose lives are at risk and help those who have been injured and try to make sure we have the, the maximum security uh, as we go forward here. Governor, have you spoken with anyone in the Bush administration? I have. I've spoken with the president. I've spoken with other officials in the Bush administration. They obviously have been uh, very supportive and are uh, prepared to provide all the support that uh, they can as well. Governor Pataki, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, well, let's not let the governor go just yet. Uh, governor, I also want to talk about the responsibilities of the National Guard right now because they are really twofold. You've talked about security, but they're also going to have to, to pitch in and help out in terms of uh, dealing with the damage and the loss of life and the injuries that have already taken place, no correct? Uh, no question. Our National Guard units are, are terrific, and they have the ability to go in and with heavy equipment to, to move uh, uh, debris and material. They have the ability to provide uh, emergency support from a medical standpoint. They have the ability to bring water and other uh, supplies to, to areas that are difficult to reach, as well as providing uh, just for stability and order. So we expect the National Guard units to be in there uh, actively helping to uh, provide assistance to those whose lives are at risk. Now some perspective. Senator Chuck Hagel of Nebraska called this a second Pearl Harbor. Do you think that's apt? As you saw this unfolding this morning, it certainly seemed like Pearl Harbor. Uh, and it is a, a tragedy of enormous magnitude, but it wasn't just an accident. This was a planned terrorist attack. And we've got to be strong in our response, not just against those individual terrorists, but against the countries that harbor them. Uh, America is under attack. New York is one of the focuses of that attack, and we've got to respond. Are you surprised at the magnitude of this attack, Governor? Did you think something to this effect could happen to this country? I think everyone's uh, surprised by the magnitude of this attack. We always knew that uh, uh, New York and America were at risk, but, and we did everything you could to prepare, but uh, uh, just no one, I think, uh, anticipated uh, an attack of this magnitude. 
as governor of the state, you want to speak directly to some of our viewers now and, and tell them what's on your mind, what you want them to know? Well, all of us know people who worked in the towers, who were in the towers, friends and loved ones. And our thoughts and prayers are with them and their families. And we're doing everything we can to pro try to reach them and provide all the support we can. But uh, this is an attack upon New York. This is an attack upon America. And what we have to do is remain calm, uh, help each other through this crisis, and be prepared to respond appropriately when, that's, when the time comes. Governor, thank you. I, I know you're very busy, and uh, we appreciate you taking the time out to talk to us today. Thank you. Thank, thank you. I want to go to Jennifer McLogan now at Kennedy Airport. Jennifer, are you ready to go? Michael, uh, the thousands of stranded passengers here at Kennedy International Airport learned of the horror either while in planes flying overhead, made an emergency landing here, or they were on the ground waiting to take off those planes never allowed to depart. They are now converging outside terminals in a confused state, wondering where to go and what to do. These interviews we have for you now were taken just moments ago. This is incredible. People are, people are panicking, people are going crazy, and there's not one cop to maintain the We have to take care of a lot of things, and I think that's what we should focus on. So it's mostly staying focused on what is important. And uh, most of important things I can think of right now is everyone that should keep their head. We have no telephone access here. So, and what about the West Coast? Are you trying to reach loved ones? Yes. I have no friends here every, in this city. I have no place to stay. What, what should I do? Just lay on this street? What should I do? You're an exchange student from Russia? Yes. They're accomplishing their goal. Uh, we are almost terrified. It's scary. It's scary, and it's just that we are so unprepared for this. That scene being played out at airports across the country as our nation comes to a standstill, and we literally ponder our fate. We are live right now at JFK Airport. Jennifer McLogan, CBS2. Jennifer, the first person you spoke with said he was very angry because he didn't see any police. What is security like now at the airport? When we first got here, the security was uh, was very tough, especially around the American terminal. We saw canine units and dogs. We will bring you that video shortly. We're having obviously transmission problems with telephones and other kinds of things, as as all of, of as everyone is in the city. Uh, there was panic, therefore, because people were a little bit confused as to wanting the police to tell them where to go and what mm -hmm. to do. Shuttle buses started pulling up. They were t being taken to hotels around here, and then we got an unconfirmed report that one of the airport hotels, the Holiday Inn, had a bomb threat. Mm. So then police and FBI converged there. There was also an unconfirmed bomb uh, scare in this airport. They evacuated everybody out of the American terminal, and the American terminal, obviously, with the two planes that we suspect went into the World Trade Center. But people are trying to stay calm. I think they realize that there's something a lot more important than getting someplace today or tomorrow. But initially, uh, the American airline uh, personnel told me that this place was going to be closed, their terminal, for at least 48 hours. Okay, Jennifer McLogan, live at JFK. Thank you for that report. All right, as we have been telling you all morning, just to recap what happened as far as the aircraft <laughs> that uh, have gone down today, and also those that uh, did that damage, in fact, obliterating the World Trade Center. American Flight 11, first aircraft from Boston bound for Los Angeles, 92 people aboard, crashed into the World Trade Center just before 9 o'clock this morning. Then, at that point, we weren't sure whether this was a terrorist attack, uh, some type of terrible accident. Then, American Flight 77 from Dulles in Washington to Los Angeles, 64 people on board, also crashed into the World Trade Center at 9.15. Following that, United Flight 93 from Newark to San Francisco with 45 on board crashed near Pittsburgh. And United Flight 175 from Boston to Los Angeles, 67 people on board. The airline will not confirm where that plane crashed. We do know that F-16 fighter jets had surrounded an aircraft that apparently was bound for Camp David, the weekend White House, in order to launch an attack there. Let's go now to Amy Nuzo. She's live at Newark. Amy, we were hearing reports early on that one of those doomed flights uh, originated at Newark. Can you confirm that for us? Yes, that is the case. Uh, uh, I'm going to just take the earpiece out of my ear because I'm hearing an echo. It's a little bit confusing. Uh, that is, in fact, the case. Flight 93 uh, from Newark bound for San Francisco crashed around 10.30 this morning in western Pennsylvania around Pittsburgh. And uh, we're not exactly sure how it went down. And uh, we believe there were approximately 45 people on board, including flight attendants and the pilot. And those people are believed to be dead. A terrible tragedy. And uh, the scene is one of, uh, 
I would say it was controlled chaos. Right now it's been uh, thinning out for the last couple of hours. Uh, around 10 o'clock, they came through the airport, announced that everyone was to get out. They evacuated the terminals. And what followed was a scene of uh, thousands upon thousands of people just walking out, kind of in a dazed state, including flight attendants who just uh, walked away from their desks and said, come on, let's get out of here. They walked out, not sure where they were going, but they knew they had to leave. And uh, for the last couple of hours, you've just had people basically standing around saying, uh, what am I supposed to do now? Where am I supposed to go? A lot of people got rides to the airport and uh, had no idea really how to get out of here because, of course, no more cars were coming in and no more cars were allowed to come in to pick people up. So uh, people on their cell phones trying to get calls, trying to figure out where to go. Uh, uh, many people from New York obviously having no way of getting back into the city tonight. Other people, uh, passengers who perhaps were flying through Newark uh, on their way to another destination who now really are stranded and confused. And uh, still some people are lingering, not sure what the plan is. And every so often people have come up to me and asked, uh, what exactly is the plan here? And we tell them there is no plan. It's very clear that there's no plan and people are pretty much just left on their own to do whatever they can. Once again, one confirmed flight uh, has resulted in a, the tragic fate of, uh, of uh, crashing to the ground with 45 people believed dead. That was flight 93 from Newark bound for San Francisco, which crashed in western Pennsylvania around Pittsburgh around 10.30 this morning. Reporting live from Newark Airport, Amy Nuzzo, CBS2. Thanks a lot, Amy. All right, Amy. And our focus, again, has been on New York for obvious reasons, but again, also an attack on the Pentagon today. The U.S. government not saying a lot about that for obvious reasons, the heart of our military operations, but the Pentagon obviously attacked today. It's believed, originally it was reported, that a plane had also crashed into the Pentagon. A Washington television station news department is now reporting there are dead inside the Pentagon. Uh, something that may be of interest to you because you're trapped in the city now. Obviously, the city is virtually shut down. Travel is very difficult. Circle Line Ferry Service is free right now to New Jersey. Again, free to New Jersey. Uh, you go ahead and get on the ferry at 42nd and 12th. It'll cross you across the Hudson over to Lincoln Harbor and Weehawken. Again, free ferry service to get you out of the city to New Jersey. That Circle Line ferries at 42nd and 12th. Okay, we're just getting a report here that uh, President Bush has just landed near Shreveport, Louisiana, and that he may meet with the press there. Once again, earlier, the president was in Sarasota, Florida. Uh, once this happened, we didn't know where the president was. We were told, though, he would not, however, be returning to Washington, D.C. We now understand he's in Shreveport, Louisiana, and the minute he gets ready to talk to the press, we'll bring it to you live. Earlier today, the president was uh, scheduled to speak to a group of school children in Sarasota, Florida, and uh, did issue a brief statement uh, calling this a terrorist attack well before we had confirmation of much of this, but it was obvious to the mm -hmm. U.S. government at that time that this was indeed a terrorist attack. I think we want to go to Cindy Shu now yes. in the newsroom. Cindy. All right, Todd and Angela, I just, uh, we did get a number for uh, people who had people. There was three information. Okay, I'm just getting new information. Uh, the United Flights. The United Flights we're talking about again, Flight 93 from Newark to San Francisco, 45 people aboard. It crashed near Pittsburgh. And United Flight 175 from Boston to LA. 67 people aboard. The airline is not saying where that crashed. The number for information is 1-800-932-8555. Again, 1-800-932-8555. And obviously, only if you, you know, had relatives aboard do you need to call that number. We're also getting new information on local transit. We're hearing that Route 80 eastbound from Saddlebrook to the city is now shut down. Route 80 eastbound from Saddlebrook to the city is shut down, as is Route 3 coming into the Lincoln Tunnel. Route 3 into the Lincoln Tunnel also shut down. The subways in lower Manhattan, some of them have now reopened, the ones that are leaving the city, and those are the A line, the F line, the E line. Again, the subways going out of the city, the A, F, and E line are now working, and the 7 to Queens, the number 7 to Queens, now up and running. Also, limited uh, service on the LIRR out of Penn Station, limited service out of the LIRR. And we're also hearing from uh, Marriott Hotel, which is at the base of the World Trade Center, that when the first plane hit the World Trade Center, they immediately ordered an evacuation. They do not know if it was complete by the second plane crash. That was only 18 minutes later. Um, 
and that the Marriott Financial Hotel, which is another one nearby, has also been evacuated. Cindy, There's, thank you very much. Are, are you done, Cindy? I just, just another quickie is that uh, big call for blood and that there is a blood center in, on Linwood Avenue in Paramus, New Jersey that can take uh, donors. Linwood Avenue in Paramus, New Jersey, and obviously all hospitals in the city, but they really need people to donate blood. Todd, back to you. Cindy Hsu in the newsroom. We are now entering the fifth hour of what the president has called a national tragedy. A first plane crashing into the World Trade Center at 8.45 this morning followed by a second plane shortly after 9.15, then an attack on the Pentagon in Washington, outside of Washington, D.C., at 9.45. At 10 o'clock this morning, the first of the towers collapsing at the World Trade Center, the second collapse, the second tower gone at 10.33, apparently as a result of not only those uh, impacts of the airplanes, but also bombs. Military, we understand right now, is on high alert status. High alert status for the military. Alexis Christophorus is joining us now to talk to us about how this is all impacting Wall Street. Well, of course, Angela, you know, the SEC earlier today said all financial markets have been shut down nationwide. Now, there are preliminary estimates that it's going to take at least several days before trading can resume. This is because of the extensive damage done to the World Trade Center. The Wall Street Financial District, of course, located just a few blocks from the tw where the Twin Towers stood. Also, the New York Mercantile Exchange, where energy futures are traded, is even closer uh, in the World Financial Center. That, of course, was not directly hit by the uh, plane assaults this morning. Many of the nation's investment firms also have at least some of their operations in the immediate area of the Trade Center. Merrill Lynch has its headquarters, or had its headquarters, I should say, in one of those towers. Also, Morgan Stanley uh, took up about 12 and a half percent of one of the towers. So definitely this impacting uh, trading, not only here, but actually worldwide. We're getting word that global markets are also in, uh, in turmoil, given the, uh, the devastating turn of events here today. All right. Alexis, thank you. Actually, I had a phone number to give out for if uh, anybody who has a uh, anybody who has a family or friends at Morgan Stanley, if you're interested in in learning more information, call this number 1-888-883-4391. Again, 888-883-4391. That's a number from Morgan Stanley if you have friends or relatives there. And again, uh, travel throughout the city has been virtually shut down. People trying to get out of the city now. We do understand there are some routes out. You cannot get into the city, though. Also, borders with Canada and Mexico have been shut down. Air traffic throughout the United States has been shut down. We're also told that in Canada, airlines are no longer serving. Again, um, and now I'm being told that the U.S.-Canadian border uh, is open and being non monitored by the New York State Police Department. A short time ago, Governor Pataki was with us telling us that the National Guard had been called out to, uh, for security reasons and, of course, with the cleanup and triage work. Michael O'Looney, what have you got? We have an update from the Defense Department. Uh, a spokesperson saying that the leadership of the Defense Department is okay. They uh, immediately began deploying troops, including a regiment of light infantry, into the streets of Washington, D.C. once it became apparent that this was an apparent terrorist attack. Uh, the Departments of Justice, State, Treasury, and Defense, and the CIA were evacuated, an estimated 20,000 people at the Pentagon alone. Agents with automatic weapons are now patrolling the White House grounds. And the FAA, as we've been reporting all morning, has ordered the entire nationwide air traffic system shut down for the first time in history. And with President Bush away from the Capitol, his advisors are now preparing a list of options, including closing the nation's borders, according to a senior U.S. official. And that source tells the AP uh, that it is premature at this point to discuss military options because investigators are still trying to determine exactly who is responsible for these attacks. Yeah, and keep in mind, evacuations have occurred all over the world, not just here in New York, uh, in New York City or in Washington, D.C. The Sears Tower and also the tallest skyscrapers in places like Boston, Cleveland, and Minnesota evacuated because who knows what's going to happen next. The fact is that we are uh, in a defensive mode now in this country, Michael, as you mentioned. Um, it is premature to talk about an attack. They don't know who is responsible. I'm sure that uh, whoever is responsible uh, isn't waving a flag somewhere saying it, it was me and I'm right here. Right. Fact of the matter is, though, this is the worst attack on mainland U.S. soil ever. 
Uh, I, I'm, I'm walking out on a, quite a limb here, but I'm sure that's the yeah. case. We don't have any idea how many people have died. Again, uh, unnamed sources with the police department tell us that the World Trade Center alone may contain thousands of dead people. Let's Again, thousands of bodies. Sorry, let's go back to Cindy Shue in the newsroom. She has more info for us. Cindy? That's right. Luckily, we're talking about the hospital. Patients at Western Long Island hospitals may now be transferred to Suffolk Hospital so they can make room for the World Trade Center injuries. Um, we also, you know, we're getting the casualty numbers in. The casualties at Bellevue, 38 people dead, including eight children, one pregnant woman, four police officers, and three firefighters. Again, 38 dead at Bellevue. St. Vincent's in the village is reporting 150 injured. Beth Israel on the east side reports 60 to 70 injured. And I can't tell you how much they really need blood donations. Once again, go to any hospital, you can donate blood. And they have a special center on Linwood Avenue in Paramus, New Jersey for that. And, you know, I'm sorry, this is just coming in, so let me just throw it in here. Um, in New Jersey, state offices in Newark are closing on staggered schedules starting at noon. Uh, state offices in Newark closing on staggered schedules starting at noon. Let's go back to Ernie and Dana. Cindy, good afternoon, and thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, they are, uh, we're calling this is the, the worst attack in history. Uh, an amazing story, America under attack, and it's hard to believe that eight years ago we were reporting on the World Trade Center bombing as we sat here, and now we're reporting on an amazing story. Uh, a deadly assault, of course, uh, in the United States. Primary targets so far, New York City and Washington. It started at around 9 a.m. World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan is no more. Both towers have been wiped out. They have been flattened. Uh, it started with two planes crashing into the towers, uh, one after another. If you're just joining us right now, we're giving you this information. About 18 minutes apart, uh, a short time later, the towers came crashing down. Uh, that happened about 30 minutes apart. Huge devastation in the area. And uh, Mayor Giuliani says uh, we will probably suffer enormous loss. Uh, amazing figures that are coming in. We just heard about some of the injured. So far, we're told that about 38 people uh, that is the death toll right now in New York City. Uh, two planes, or several planes that were involved here, uh, hundreds reportedly killed passengers and crew members aboard American and United flights. Uh, by the way, if you're joining us right now, if you want some information, there is a telephone number we can give you. It's 1-800-932-8555. That is a number that you would call if you want information on the uh, passengers aboard the American and the United flights. Uh, also, there is more to the story, Dana, as you know, we have been uh, spread out into Washington uh, this morning at about the same time as New York City was under attack. A plane struck the Pentagon. Uh, another tragic terrorist hit there. Many victims have been reported. And also a second plane that was targeting either the Pentagon or Camp David, the presidential retreat in Maryland, was forced down by U.S. fighter planes. A car bomb also went off outside the State Department, report of a fire at some sort at the Washington Mall, and then another plane uh, that struck down in uh, Pittsburgh, a United flight uh, near a small landing strip. Uh, we've been told that the president, as we understand it, is safe. Uh, he was in Sarasota, Florida earlier this morning. Uh, he is due to arrive in Shreveport, Louisiana, where perhaps he'll hold a news conference there. Uh, he spoke about this horrible chain of events today. Uh, the president and other top government leaders and officials are now being moved to a undisclosed area, as we understand, for safety and for security reasons. Uh, Dana, we are following the story, of course, from uh, the standpoint of what's happening nationwide, but also targeting what's happening here in New York City. It is. As Governor Pataki said live here in the last hour to Todd and Angela, America is under attack, New York is under attack. And the governor's saying that this state is responding strong and effectively. He's got the National Guard activated across the state to help New York City fire and police officials. He also has uh, National Guard uh, crews on stand by in our neighboring states and the governor being very adamant about being strong in our response not only to the individuals responsible to, for this but the countries responsible for this and uh, and also the governor urging us all to remain calm which in something like this is difficult but we're here for you we'll all get through this together as we piece together this horrible tragedy it's a very emotional story obviously we're talking about human life here and the events that are taking place you talked about responsibility to bring you up to date too as we reported a short time ago uh, there are two individuals or two groups that are now 
at least making comment as to what happened. The uh, Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine and also Osama bin Laden said to be taking some responsibility, if you will, for what has occurred. Uh, three weeks ago, there was a report uh, in London uh, that said that Osama bin Laden had been warning about a possible hit of some, some type for the U.S. support in Israel. Uh, and there is reports also of celebration on the West Bank today as a result of what has happened. Mm -hmm. uh, it is an emotional story all around. Our reporters are in the field trying to bring you the details of exactly what is going on. But the pain and the suffering uh, that we see in human life is the story here. You know, uh, you said earlier, uh, back in 1993, February 26, you and I were sitting right yes. here, and I had just finished the new news, and the word came across in my earpiece, there's been a transformer explosion at the World Trade Center. And that's what we thought it was at first. And you remember the pictures there of the disbelief and of the people people covered with soot and now look at these pictures today it looks like a ghost town down there with the, the crumbling debris from the two skyscrapers falling on people and making it very difficult for them to breathe as well as dealing with the, just the crush of concrete and steel falling on them and, and just the you know you think you live in a safe place. How, Absolutely. How could this happen? Uh, as, this happen? as we've also been reporting, uh, Senator uh, Chuck Hagel of Nebraska uh, has spoken out and he has described it uh, as, as many people have been talking about this as the uh, second Pearl Harbor. Uh, as, as we were driving in here today, I mean, there were comments from people that just couldn't believe what was going on. I mean, it's, it's a frightening situation. Obviously, we're trying to remain calm uh, because we've also heard reports that perhaps uh, this is not over. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a, a full military alert here because of the possibility that perhaps something else may occur today. Michael Aluni is one of our reporters here who's been covering this for us and has some up-to-date information. Michael? Dana, we've been talking a lot about Osama bin Laden and whether he may be responsible or behind some of these attacks. Afghanistan, this is coming from the Associated Press, Afghanistan's hardline Taliban rulers have condemned the devastating terrorist attacks in New York and in Washington and have rejected any suggestion that Osama bin Laden could be behind them. However, keep this in mind. In June, a U.S. judge had set tomorrow as the sentencing date for a bin Laden associate for his role in the bombing of a U.S. embassy in 1998 in Tanzania. That bombing killed 213 people. The sentencing had been set for the federal courthouse near the World Trade Center and again set for tomorrow. And of course, as you know, Michael, uh, September 17th uh, is the anniversary of the signing of the Camp David Accord. Uh, it was 23 years ago when uh, Menachem Begin and Yasser Arafat, President Jimmy Carter, were all part of that. Uh, many people uh, fear that perhaps that was also significant here in what's happened uh, and perhaps uh, played a major role in, in why it happened on this day. We are trying to get some additional information, and I know that you're miking up for us. Um, you ready, Marcella Palmer? Yeah, Marcella, what do you have for us? Uh, just an eyewitness account. I, I've been doing this for a while, since 93. and. Uh, Try not to get choked up here. I've never okay. seen well, anything we'll just like this. Okay, take your time this. with this. Where yeah. were you and, and what time? We, uh, around 8.40, 8.45, Courier, Ivan, Noe, and myself, we were coming back from Park Slope where I just completed a story on uh, polling places. And uh, we were traveling north on West Street, and we were right, we were in front of the building. Right and in front of the we were building? Right in front of the building. And then what happened? We just, I didn't know it was a plane at the time. We just heard an explosion and uh, didn't see flames, just saw people running and debris coming coming down. I was like, my goodness, what it's coming on down on, on your car? On top of the car, right. on top of people on the street. You can imagine what was running through your mind at that moment. You couldn't imagine what was happening. I didn't know whether to go into reporter mode and call it in or get back out of there. That's one of the most difficult things, and that is that as a reporter, you know, your instinct is I'm going to be doing my job, but also there's the You're human in side. The middle of and you say, well, what's situation. happening here? Exactly. So how did you respond? So we, I, I did call it in, we pulled over to the side a little bit. I mean, there were, I hate to say it, but it's the fact that, you know, remains sitting right in front of us, hands, um, whatever you can imagine. Unfortunately, a car was on fire in front of us, debris had fallen, uh, flaming debris had fallen down on top of a little car, mm -hmm. and God, nobody was in it. And um, uh, we heard another explosion, and I'm assuming that's the one that came from the, the lower level since there were two and I said, right because it was like here. 18 minutes apart well this is no the first the first explosion and there was a second explosion in the same building okay. there were two explosions okay there. there may have been three I heard something smaller it may have been just crackling uh, we pulled around the corner onto another block onto Broadway right behind the building and um, I was sitting there trying to call in my cell phone was dead people were trying to call out from pay phones that wasn't working um, 
So people were running. After a while, they got a little lax, and they started looking up. And I said, you know what, I have a bad feeling about this. We need to get out of mm -hmm. here. So we sat for a couple more minutes, and then wouldn't you know it, we heard the second explosion, big ball of flame, uh, debris flying towards the SUV. And look at that video as you're, as yeah. you're speaking yeah. about this. It's hard and to look at. It, is, it really is. And you know, the first thought that came to me, and as, as you know, I've, I've certainly been reporting news in this city for some 23 years, mm -hmm. and just having experienced a number of events, uh, I look at something like this and I say, am, am I watching something that's really happening? Oh, right. It's almost like a, like a movie, because you Surreal. know, you do see films that are based on this type of thing, and, and you almost ask yourself, if, if I'm watching the wrong channel, maybe right. this is a film, maybe this is a movie, but this is the reality of what's going on. Look at the uh, flames that are, uh, are coming out of this building. And of course, you know, we're thinking about the number of, of injured and the number of dead. Mayor Giuliani is quite angry, as you know, uh, about what has happened. But the next step is wh where do we go from here? But I wanted you to finish your story. How long did you stay there? Uh, well, he started to put the car in drive, but realized, Ivan, uh, realized there were just too many people. I mean, it, it was a mass of people, a sea of people. We couldn't go anywhere. And uh, I said, let's get out of here, get out of the truck. Mm -hmm. We got out of the truck, he grabbed his keys and just ran. And he had no choice but to run, you know, if, if it wasn't from fear, it was from the crush of people just pushing us. We have President Bush right now. We have to go to uh, the president of Louisiana. Marcella, thank you. Well, uh, president Bush, who was in Florida when this happened, about to speak to some children, and then it said early on, these are terrorists and we're going to get the folks, uh, you know, who have committed this. And so we've been waiting uh, for the president to make his next move because obviously Washington is, uh, Washington's in trouble too here today, and they're buckling down as they evacuate many of the federal buildings. Yeah. This, is, uh, this is coming to us from the broadcast pool. It's traveling with the president. Uh, obviously, we're getting, it's a very chaotic day, as you can imagine, a, a horrible tragedy has taken place, and people are working very hard to get stuff done and get it done right, and obviously the pool is having trouble feeding the tape, but again, uh, the president said, make no mistake, the United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. Cowardly acts, I think it's fair to say we don't quite have our arms around the, 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 the magnitude of it all. I want to reassure the American people that full, the full resources of the federal government are working to assist local authorities to save lives and to help the victims of these attacks. Make no mistake, the United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. I've been in regular contact with the Vice President, Secretary of Defense, the National Security Team, and my Cabinet. We have taken all appropriate, appropriate security precautions to protect the American people. Our military at home and around the world is on high alert status. And we have taken the necessary security precautions to continue the functions of your government. We have been in touch with the leaders of Congress and with world leaders to assure them that we will do what is, whatever is necessary to protect America and Americans. I ask the American people to join me and saying a thanks for all the folks who have been fighting hard to rescue our fellow citizens and to join me in saying a prayer for the victims and their families. The resolve of our great nation is being tested, but make no mistake, we will show the world that we will pass this test. God bless. President Bush, a short time ago, in his second remarks of the day, the president initially was headed back to the White House, and a decision was made, a security decision was made to divert the flight. And so the president will not go back to Washington, at least not yet. When he, when he will return, perhaps John King can tell us. Our senior White House correspondent joins us now. John? John, are you there? Yes, I am, Aaron. Can you hear me? Yes, I do. I hear you fine. Uh, do you have any word on when the president will come back? 
No, we do not. As you reported, we were told earlier in the day the number one priority was the president's safety. The number two priority was to get him back to the White House because they believe that would send a powerful political statement. But as the president was on his way back from Florida, we are told by sources a security decision was made that at this time not to bring him back to Washington. So he was brought, and we won't disclose his exact location for security reasons, he was brought to one of several military installations in the United States that is equipped, we are told, with a very sophisticated command and control bunker, very much like the equipment that would be available to the president here at the White House in the White House Situation Room. We are also told that national security team members are still in the White House Situation Room, and earlier today, at least as of a little more than an hour ago, Vice President Cheney as well, uh, directing operations and monitoring things from there. But the president obviously deciding not to come directly back to Washington. We are told that is for security reasons, delivering the statement you just heard. He has been in touch with congressional leaders, and we are told leadership members of the U.S. Congress are also being taken to an undisclosed location for their security. So we're trying to get more information on that, and we will bring that to you as soon as we have it. Aaron. John, thanks. Senior White House correspondent John King. Do, uh, Peter Bergen, uh, CNN's Peter Bergen has been tracking uh, the government of Afghanistan for some time, and he was listening in a few moments ago when the Taliban spokesman was speaking. Uh, Peter, first of all, what did you hear? Was there anything that perhaps the, the, the rest of us might not have heard any nuance uh, in what you heard? Why don't you start there? Well, we just heard from the foreign minister, Wakil uh, Mutawakil, who's <clears throat> relatively speaking a moderate of the Taliban movement. He basically repeated what I think is a standard Taliban line we've heard for the past at least couple of years, which is that Osama bin Laden isn't a terrorist and that he's being contained by the Taliban and that he's not able to uh, conduct political or military missions. Um, this, unfortunately, is really a, a false statement uh, since Osama bin Laden has been uh, fingered by both Yemeni and U.S. authorities for the bombing of the USS Cole in Yemen uh, in October 2000. Uh, there isn't an indictment there yet. The FBI continues to investigate, but uh, senior Yemeni officials and senior U.S. officials have said that he's the primary suspect. So uh, we've seen that bin Laden uh, was able to bomb two U.S. embassies in Africa in 98 within nine minutes of each other. We've seen that bin Laden was able to blow a huge hole in the side of one of the most sophisticated warships in the U.S. In the US Navy the USS Cole in Yemen in October of last year. And uh, unfortunately, uh, he must be top of the list of uh, the person sophisticated enough in terms of operations uh, to bring off these kinds of uh, terrible disasters we've seen today. Um, if, uh, if you're looking for who is the most likely suspect, he has to be it. You've got an operation in which uh, several people appear to commit suicide. You've also got an operation in which people uh, uh, obviously had some skill in piloting planes. These are uh, clearly attributes of his organization. We know that he has pilots in his organization. We've seen several in several instances that his members of his organization commit suicide in attacks. Uh, we've also seen a pattern of warnings in previous bin Laden attacks in which this fits. Uh, nine weeks before the U.S. Embassy bombings in Africa in August of 98, bin Laden held a press conference in Afghanistan talking about, quote, good news in coming weeks. Uh, a few months before the USS Cole was bombed in Yemen, a videotape uh, circulated around the Middle East in which bin Laden uh, uh, was wearing a Yemeni dagger, which he's never done in previous photographs, and uh, one of his, uh, 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 his number two uh, called for attacks on U.S. Uh, targets in Yemen. Uh, just recently, there's been a videotape floating around the Middle East in which uh, bin Laden, a very confident bin Laden, calls for attacks on the United States. Uh, says that the victory of Yemen, referring to the USS Cole attack, will continue. Uh, people that I've talked to are familiar with the bin Laden organization, said that the threats on this tape were very serious, uh, that there was an imminent attack in the works. I, I spoke to somebody who was uh, familiar with the organization a, a few weeks ago who made those statements to me. I had been very concerned about a potential attack as a result of this tape. Uh, it fits with the modus operandi, which is to Talk, talk about potential attacks coming up uh, relatively soon without being particularly specific. Karen. Peter, let, let me just interrupt you for a second. Uh, our senior analyst, Jeff Greenfield, is here, and uh, Jeff has a question. Jeff, go ahead. Hi, Peter. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you actually interviewed Osama bin Laden some years ago, correct? Yeah, in 97 for right. CNN. Now, at that time, uh, what did he say about the, the, the notion of targeting civilians? I mean, what, what is the rationale behind targeting civilians for death and destruction? 
Well, at that time, Jeff, uh, he told us that because of the American military presence in the Middle East, that uh, he was calling for attacks on U.S. soldiers. Uh, now, he said if American civilians got in the way, that was sort of their problem. Uh, so at that time, in 97, he was really only calling for attacks on American uh, military targets. In, later, that uh, position evolved. By, by 98, he was calling for attacks on all Americans, whether civilian or military. I think the rationale behind that thinking is that, uh, in his view, if you're an American taxpayer, you're subsidizing um, the anti-Islamic, uh, quote, activities that, uh, that he's against, whether that's in Saudi Arabia, uh, with the American military presence there, or with America's support for Israel and in the, in the ongoing uh, intifada, Jeff. Peter, thank you for your work today. I suspect we'll get back to you, uh, but we appreciate the, the background, which I think gives us some context for why the focus is again on bin Laden. Uh, but we should add that as we talk to you now, we can't be certain. We do not know that that's who is behind what has happened. What we do know is an extraordinary national tragedy has taken place, that someone is responsible, that the American government has promised to hunt down and punish, the president's words a short time ago, hunt down and punish whoever is responsible. Do we have Director Gates still on the phone? No, we, I, I don't believe I guess we do, we do not. Be uh, because the question, obviously, we've already heard it with General Clark and at least one of the congressmen asking the question, how can an agency with an estimated budget of $26.5 billion a year not have known this? I think that's the first of many such questions uh, we're going to be hearing. Sandy Berger, who worked national security in the Clinton administration, and Richard Holbrook, the former UN ambassador, back on the phone uh, with us. Uh, Mr. Berger, give me a sense of what is going on in Washington right now. What, who are the players at the table? Where is the table? And what are they doing? Well, uh, obviously, the President of the United States is uh, uh, at the head of the table no matter where he is. Um, but uh, um, uh, uh, others around that table include the Secretary of Defense and Attorney General, uh, head of the FBI, the National Security Advisor, uh, Secretary of State, because uh, this may obviously involve uh, uh, international uh, uh uh, matters. I think. I think we, in the midst of our outrage and uh, indignation, we have to stay focused and uh, stay determined here. The first job in this situation is rescue and and to deal with what must be thousands of people here who are uh, uh, in peril. This is in the first instance a massive uh, rescue operation. In the second instance, it's a security operation. We don't know uh, what else uh, may be part of this multifaceted uh, operation. Uh, a number of precautions have been taken in the last few hours, uh, and we have to uh, obviously lock down as much as we can. Uh, and then the focus becomes uh, detection. And I think that given the magnitude of this, given the fact that uh, this has obviously involved multiple uh, points of, uh, uh, of origin uh, in the United States. Uh, it is inconceivable to me that we will not uh, know uh, uh, relatively uh, quickly when the dust uh, settles uh, who is responsible for this. Now, Mr. Holbrook, Ambassador Holbrook, what has happened today is a is extraordinary. Give it. Give it a kind of historical context, the enormity of what's taken place. Well, I think your coverage has made it more clear than anything else, although despite the superb efforts you've made, it hasn't yet become fully evident to your viewers what would be evident to any of us like myself who worked in the World Trade Center. I was there in the last bombing, as I mentioned earlier. That. Uh, the number of people in that area, including the Chambers Street subway stop, which goes right under the World Trade Center, uh, means that the dimensions of it exceed by a factor of it, probably a hundred any previous uh, incident, including Oklahoma City and the previous World Trade Center in American history. And one must be ready for news that will be very, very grim indeed for all of us as individuals who will have friends and relatives there and for all Americans. And there will be uh, additional consequences. This is the financial center of the world. 
the uh, buildings in that area, all of which have now been evacuated, whose infrastructures may be threatened by gas and uh, electrical line degradation, uh, could affect, at least temporarily, uh, the financial markets as well, although I would leave that to Treasury and Sandy Berger listed the people at the table. I'm not sure if Sandy mentioned the Treasury Secretary, but I'm sure the Treasury and the Fed are well aware of the implications of orderly movement and capital transfers. Now, looking beyond that, Aaron, I, I think we have to go back to the fact that everyone has talked about the possibility of this kind of thing for a long time and we faced lesser uh, but similar attempts. Uh, this exceeded, apparently, the expectations of the intelligence experts, and uh, we will learn more about that in the weeks to come. But I need to underscore one point. To find the people responsible is going to take a unified international effort. No one nation, not even the United States, can do it on its own. And we must have the full cooperation of the Russians, of the states in the Middle East, because I think the assumption that that's the region where this was planned is pretty solid. And, and I repeat this again, any nation that is seen to have harbored or abetted or sheltered any of these people must be treated as co-equally responsible. They cannot hide behind the facade we just saw in the remarks of the Taliban foreign minister. And Peter Bergen's uh, extraordinarily insightful explanation a few minutes ago on C CNN, I think, is the first real glimpse into that, that the viewers have had into how dangerous this is. If the Taliban shelters Osama bin Laden, as they do, and if Osama bin Laden is responsible for this, as I think almost everyone is going to suspect, then the Taliban must be held equally responsible for what has happened today. Jeff? And Ambassador Holbrook, what can, I'm, I'm, I would like you to be specific. What does that mean? Are you talking about a retaliatory strike Is against Jeff? Afghanistan? Yeah, that's Jeff. It's Jeff Greenfield. I'm sorry, Ambassador. Hi, Jeff. No. Is that what but, you mean, that if, if, if put, the, put the links together? No, I, let me be, Jeff, let me be, let me be very frank, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to lapse into uh, bloody-minded uh, verbal excesses at a moment of high emotion, but let's be very blunt about this. If a country or regime, the Taliban or some other regime to be determined by the intelligence community, has sheltered people who played a role in this, they cannot hide behind the uh, attributes of they didn't know it, they had nothing to do with it. They must cooperate in the pursuit of the people responsible. And since the Taliban, a leader, has been publicly proclaimed by Osama bin Laden as the, uh, as the present spiritual leader of the Muslim world, I'm referring to bin Laden's de declaration that Mullah Muhammad Omar is the rightful leader of the spiritual leader of the Muslim world, something he said on tape, quoted by John Burns in the New York Times two days ago. And uh, if, in fact, these people are in some degree of collusion, I personally believe, and I'm only speaking for myself here, I personally believe that the Taliban should be uh, regarded as co-equally responsible for this, and therefore, if and when we consider military action, it, sh it is fully justified. and. Uh, and the Taliban should face the same consequences. Uh, Ambassador, thank you. Just uh, quickly, if we can, one uh, uh, last question to Sandy Berger. When, when you were at the table, in, in honesty, did you ever anticipate the magnitude, an attack of this magnitude, which has taken place just to remind people, not just in this city, in New York, not just in the capital, Washington, but on a number of airliners flying across the country as well. Was the planning that broad, with the fear that great? Well, I think uh, uh, for, for some time uh, uh, we have known uh, that we are uh, uh, vulnerable to a, a, a serious attack. Uh, a multiple attack was thwarted, as you recall, during the Millennium New Year. Um, but I think this, you know, certainly exceeds uh, in scope 
um, anything that the uh, intelligence community anticipated um, and uh, uh, is, a, as I said, a, an extraordinarily sophisticated operation uh, to carry out an op something like this from, from various sites in the United States relatively simultaneously without detection. Um, and uh, uh, whoever has, uh, has perpetrated this has, has declared war on the United States, uh, and uh, uh, we, we, we will have to respond uh, uh, accordingly. But I would, I would also caution here that we should, we should be careful about jumping to uh, certitude uh, about what happened here. We'll know this soon enough. Um, and we'll also know, uh, be able to find out why uh, we, this was not detected. I think that's, that's just a, an extraordinarily important point, that, that what is going on right now at this moment is more important than why it happened. And what is going on is you have thousands of people, in, we presume, in a number of different places whose lives are at risk, who have been hurt, who need to be rescued, who need to be treated, who need to be taken to hospitals in, in New York. Uh, in northern New Jersey where the bulk of the injured are being treated here. There is a critical shortage of blood. Hospital officials are uh, desperately seeking help there. Uh, and as Mr. Berger said, time enough later to figure out who and how we deal with it. Uh, Ambassador Holbrook, Sandy Berger, thank you uh, both for joining us. Uh, just, William Rod, I just was looking down. There are literally down below us on uh, by Madison Square Garden, which is where we're located, hundreds, perhaps thousands of people on the corner, and they are just looking out. And from where they are, they can't see very much but the smoke. Uh, and I can't tell you if something has happened, but and it's lunch hour here, and there's just a lot of people, as there have been all morning, looking at a street that is almost empty. As New York, the southern part of New York, Penn Station by the garden, essentially being evacuated to allow emergency crews to get to the scene. William Rodriguez is a maintenance worker at the Trade Center, I believe. In any case, he's on the phone with us now. Mr. Rodriguez, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Tell me where you were when, well, which of the two buildings uh, were you in? I work on the building one, the and one that got hit uh, the first time. Tell me what happened. Uh, I was on the basement, which is a support floor for the maintenance company, and uh, we hear like a big rumble not like an impact, like a rumble, uh, like something uh, like moving furniture on a, on a, on a massive way. And um, all of a sudden we hear another rumble and a guy comes running, running into our office and all his skin was off his body. All his skin, we, we went crazy, we started screaming, we told him to get out. We took everybody out of the office outside to the loading dock area and then I went back in and uh, when I went back in, I saw people, I heard uh, people that were stuck on an elevator, on a freight elevator, because all the elevators went down. And water was going in, and they were probably getting drowned. And we get a couple of pipes and opened the elevator, and we got the people out. I went back up, and I saw one of the officers from the Port Authority Police. I've been working there for 20 years, so I knew him very well. Uh, my routine on the World Trade Center is in charge of the staircase. And since there was no elevator service, I have the master key for all the for all the uh, uh, staircase doors. So I went up with the uh, police officer and a group of uh, firemen. As we went up, there was a lot of people coming down, and while we got, it was very difficult to get up. Mr. Rod uh -huh. Mr. Rodriguez, how much time has taken has elapsed here uh, in, in this? As you recount the events, did it seem like hours, minutes, seconds? No, it wasn't hours. It, but what it did was, it seem it like? A, it seemed, well, there was a there was a big time, like a gap. There was a yeah. gap of time. I won't be able to tell you if it was 15, okay. 20 minutes, but it was uh, it was a gap of time. We heard while we were on the 33rd floor. I'm sorry, on the 27th floor, because we stopped there with the fire department because the equipment was very heavy and they were out, they were breathing very hard. They took a break because they couldn't continue going up, so they wanted to take a break. Yeah. And um, we have a person on a wheelchair that we were going to bring down on a gurney and a lady that was having a problem with, uh, with a heart attack and, um, and some of the guy that was uh, breathing uh, hardly. 
and uh, we went a couple of floors up while they were putting the person in the gurney, got up to the 39th floor, and we heard on the radio that um, the 65th floor collapsed. I right. heard it collapsed. Mr. Mr. Rodriguez, let me stop you there at the 65th floor, um, and let me add, you're a lucky man, it seems like today. Thank you for joining us. Matt Cornelius, you were on the 64th floor, 65th floor? 65th floor, yeah, that's where I work. Tell me what happened. Uh, well, I arrived at work a little bit early today. What do you do? And uh, I work for the Port Authority okay. in the Aviation Department. And uh, I was just putting my stuff away, and all of a sudden we heard a loud crash. And uh, the building started shaking, kind of moving like a wave. What did uh, you think was happening? I had no, no idea. I mean, we, we figured either an airplane had hit it or... A, a, our first instinct was airplane and everyone started screaming and said you know move away from the windows and let's get out of here and we saw debris fall past the window on the north side how, how much just to help our viewers kind of orient themselves you're on the 65th floor of a building that is how many stories i, think, I believe it's 110. so 50 stories above you this has taken place i, I imagine so okay. we, we really had no idea um, at all what had happened uh, until we exited the building. I mean, I had no idea the, the magnitude. Just took the stairs. I believe I actually was in the stairs of that, of that same man because I remember the, the uh, yeah, I saw, I saw the person in the wheelchair. Uh, we, we made it pretty fast down to 40th floor. And then from there, the smoke got a little bit thick and uh, it, it was a lot slower. We maybe made uh, a floor about every two minutes. And how many people are in this group with you? Uh, well, there was just one other person that I worked with that was with us. Uh, it was packed. I mean, it was a, a, a virtual traffic jam in the staircase, uh, up and down, I guess. Um, it was very full. People screaming? No, actually, everyone maintained calm uh, really well. Uh, I was impressed with that. I think uh, for some people, it brought back memories of the bombing. People had been there before when that happened. But uh, I was amazed, really. Uh, we got in the stairway, we were moving down. Uh, when the fire department were, were coming up, uh, he'd say, you know, move to left. Everyone moved to left. And everyone complied. And a couple of people started crying a little bit, but you know, we said we're going to get out of here. We just got to uh, just got to focus and take it one step at a time. Was it noisy? Or was there screaming? No, it was, uh, was it quiet. Was no, it was, eerie. It, it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't quiet. I mean, people were talking. I, in fact, someone was was laughing. I kept hearing that. And I, I thought that was strange, but uh, it, it was pretty normal I mean, it wasn't uh, we didn't know what was going on I mean all we knew was something major something had happened. Had happened exactly but we didn't really uh, understand the full severity of the situation so people weren't pa panicking uh, once we got down to the they put us on the plaza level uh, which was disturbing because the there was a lot of debris in the plaza level yeah. and a, a lot of carnage basically uh, we then we then moved out the back towards uh, Broadway and when I they said the police were saying don't look back don't look back and of course, I made it about a half a block, and I looked back, and I saw the other tower on fire. And I couldn't believe it. And uh, terrified. I mean, were you terrified? Uh, yeah. For when we were stuck in that stairway, I mean, we stopped every now and then. It started to get nervous, but we never had any fear of the building collapse. I mean, we we had no idea what was going on. Uh, so um, once I got out, and it's still sinking in the real uh, full severity of it. I mean, it's just an awful, awful That's thing. That's true of everybody. Yeah. So, lucky man. I am very lucky. I, uh, I thank God very much. That's all you might. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Very much. Thank you. Uh, in Washington, D.C., thank you, Matt. They have declared a, a state of emergency. Do we have, do we have a guest there or, okay. Uh, Wash, Washington has declared Washington, D.C., a state of emergency. I believe I was just told that the Space Needle in Seattle has been closed down. Is that correct? Did I hear you guys? Um, there are a couple of points we might make there. Uh, back uh, at, at the, in the year 2000, just before New Year's Eve, uh, coming into Washington State, a man was stopped with explosives, and as it turned out, uh, that was a part of uh, a plan, a t planned terrorist attack, and it caused the city of Seattle to shut down what had been an enormously elaborate millennium celebration. They are very much on edge in Seattle. We were just there last week, and uh, it's not surprising to me that they would shut that building down. Elise Marcos is uh, an official with New York City Hospitals, and she joins us. He, I'm sorry, he joins us now. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, I hear you okay. Um, I apologize for the stuttered introduction. Tell me the situation in the hospitals. 
Well, in at Bellevue Hospital, which is, the, which is the largest public hospital in the city, and is relatively near the uh, the uh, incident, uh, we have, as of now, received approximately 125, uh, 30 patients. Uh, uh, two are are dead, unfortunately. Uh, some have brain injuries, uh, very serious fractures. And uh, we are now uh, getting more patients from other hospitals that need uh, microsurgery or implantation of uh, limbs and, and plastic uh, surgery. So it is a rather overwhelming situation here. Mr. And, Marcos, Mr. Yes. Marcos, you were outside the buildings in that period between uh, the planes hitting and the, and the buildings collapsing. Can you tell me what you saw? Well, as uh, president of the public hospitals, I was asked immediately within seconds to join the crisis assistant uh, unit, which is located across the street from the World Trade Center. So I drove there, and uh, as I was parking, a, a huge uh, piece of rock hit the back of uh, uh, the car, uh, broke the windshield where I was sitting, so I'm very lucky to, to be uh, alive. Or, or being in any more danger never crossed my mind. And then, Bill, you said it wasn't... Sorry? Uh, Jim, I'm sorry to interrupt because I want to just point out in this live picture here, um, what you're looking at is damage to an adjoining building. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the impact of this, um, not just to those twin tra towers, but also to adjoining buildings. Um, and it looks like there is still, obviously, smoke. And I think I saw some flames there as well, Jim. Yeah. Um, so clearly, there is um, still damage. And well, they're all bunched up so closely together down there, mm -hmm. obviously. And uh, there, there was bound to be collateral damage in the, in the neighboring business, yeah, absolutely. businesses and absolutely. buildings. Um, Bill, as you as you were going down that darkened stairwell and you say you had no thought that the building might collapse, was that because you had faith in the integrity of the building or simply because you did not know what was going on? I had on? no idea the magnitude of the crash above us. We didn't know that there were two, we didn't know anything had happened over in two. We thought it was just us in one. And as, uh, as the further we got down, you figure you're, you're eight, you're 90 floors away from the worst of it. I figured when we came out into the concourse level of the building that everything would appear to be relatively normal. But when we got down to the, into the concourse level, which is very much like a shopping mall, mm -hmm. it, it, it was just flooded. It was, and, and emergency personnel were very, very urgently trying to get us out of the building. And I so myself- So were people milling around down there trying to check on others in the building? No, or were as they soon as you came out of the out? stairwell, there was great urgency, just personnel, just just go that way, go that way, get out, get out, get out, and everybody was just walking through water. Sir, can I ask you to stand by for just a moment? Mary Johnson on the phone, she is with the New York Hospital mm -hmm. Association, and this is the theme that you are going to hear not only throughout this day, but for many days to come, and that is the urgent need for blood. Mary, you want to talk to us some more about that? Hi, um, yes. The New York Blood Center has announced a blood emergency for the greater New York and New Jersey metropolitan area. And the Blood Center, as well as the Greater New York Hospital Association, are urging all eligible donors to make blood donations at donor sites in Manhattan, Brooklyn, Staten Island, Long Island, New Jersey, and Westchester. I can read off some of those addresses if you'd like. Please I can do. also give you the toll-free number to call about where to donate, and that is 1-800-933-2566. There are two addresses in Manhattan, the New York Blood Center at 310 East 67th Street, that's between 1st and 2nd, as well as the Red Cross's offices at 150 Amsterdam Avenue at 66th Street. I have heard that there are some lines at that location, and we just ask people to know that we greatly appreciate, you know, their uh, efforts to donate blood and that in the coming days and weeks we will need blood donations so if the line is long just ask when you can come back or please come back at, at another time because you know at this point uh, it's hard to assess exactly how much blood we'll need but we have been hearing from some of our members that they do need blood and they're going to need it in the coming days that's what i was going to ask mary any indication of how uh, how much blood is needed and how extensive um the need is in, in that area in the hospitals? Well, you know, what I can tell you is in general, New York has a, a shortage of blood. Mm -hmm. So at this point in time, when we, you know, have unknown medical emergencies to an unknown degree coming in, we do need people to just 
go to these locations and I can read them if you'd like. And also there are many hospitals in the area um, who can collect their own blood. So um, people could also check with their local hospital. Okay, and, and Jim Dolan here just pointed out, I know you're at the end of the summer and blood supplies are always very low uh, during the summer months. So I can imagine the need is, is very great. The need is very great and we greatly appreciate everyone's help. And I'm just gonna read that 1-800 number again. 1-800-933-2566 um, if you need locations. Otherwise, Mary, I think... Mary, this is Roz Abrams. I say we take the time now to give the locations. Okay. If you have them in front of you, yes, it's I do. that important. Fire away. Okay. In Manhattan, the New York Blood Center at 310 East 67th Street between 1st and 2nd Avenues. The Red Cross at 150 Amsterdam Avenue at 66th Street. In Brooklyn, 120 Lawrence Street near Metro Tech. Mm -hmm. In Staten Island, 1625 Forest Avenue. In Long Island, there are four locations. 2500 Marcus Avenue in Lake Success. 3125 Veterans Highway in Bohemia. 333 Merrick Road in Rockville Center. And Route 10 North in Huntington. In Westchester, there's a donation site at 525 Executive Boulevard in Elmsford. And in New Jersey at 167 New Street in New Brunswick. And also, I want to announce that many hospitals do have blood collection efforts. I, I faxed a copy of that. Perhaps we can put it up later on the screen. Mary, perhaps we can. Needless to say, we are going to take some of those locations that you just shared with us and...